Once again, it's time, Frida. Yay! The new award books are out. These books are fantastical. Oh, Frida, are you going to make up words again? You got it, Kafka. Now on to the first award. Take it away, library lady. And the nominees for best fantasy are. Pirates Arg, a life at sea filled with high adventures and treasure that be magical treasures that are rumored about. So, me hearties, Hillary wants to be a pirate in the worst way. She can tread water for 37 minutes, tie knots faster than a fleet of sailors, and she owns a rather pointy sword. But apparently her application to the very nearly honorable League of Pirates has been denied. Because... She's a girl! Now her Admiral Dad is shipping her off to a fancy finishing school. She must escape this life of petticoats and politeness. At least her pet gargoyle may be some help or not. Arr. You're not double jointed? You can't do tricks with your body? Well, neither can Abby. She has no special tricks or talents. Except for one, she can tug her ears and make an egg spin, no hands involved. Her family thinks she's the next great magician. That's why she ended up going to a nerdy magic camp. Abby Cadabra, now your life is spinning out of control. Rump. The word means, well, rump roast. Or, ahem, <clears throat> you know. Or, it could be your name, or half your name, which would make you the butt <laughs> of a lot of jokes, especially if you lived in a kingdom where your name is full of meaning and power. So, for this one boy, so named Rump, life stinks tangled with problems until he discovers his gift. That's right! He can spin straw into gold! Or is it his curse? Summer should be fun! But Ben is being sent to his grandfather's home in boring, barren Buttonville. The only activity around is at the senior center, where Pudding Day and Bingo are a big deal. He's only met one kid so far, Pearl, who also agrees that this town is Dullsville. And then, Grandpa Abe's cat brings home, wait, a weird rat? No, it's a bat. Oh my, a baby dragon. And wait again, there's a mysterious worm farm, and Sasquatch is running loose. Pearl and Ben are in for the most fantastical summer of their life. Ooh, magical. Hey, isn't Sasquatch and Bigfoot real? Uh, no, Frida, but you have big feet. No, you got big feet. No, you do. Shh, Kafka, it's time for the next award. And the nominees for Best Realistic Fiction, including historical, are... He'd never return to the mound, never be a star, or make his angry dad proud. A shame, because Nick loved baseball. He was one of the best youth league pitchers in all of Nebraska. But Nick hadn't played or even seen a real baseball game in over a year. In 1935, polio had struck him out of the game. You can't pitch on one leg, or so he thought, until a feisty girl neighbor, along with one of the greatest pitchers ever, Satchel Paige, convinced him that he could be king of the mound again. Do you love 
magic? Robbie Darko does. The old-timey kind, not the Harry Potter wizard kind, but real magicians, illusionists like Harry Houdini. So Robbie dreams of becoming such a legend. Of course, he has a few things in his way, like not starting fires, avoiding wobbly-eyed grandmas, and convincing everyone he's not a dorko. Zelda has a weird dog. She wanted a normal one. You see, her family moved from New York to Vermont, and in her new town, she happens to be the only one with bushy hair, a strange dog, and a wacky grandfather. He once put cow tongue in her lunchbox. No more weirdness. Zelda wants a normal life with a real dog of her own, one she can walk and love. Not the weird practice dog that her grandfather got her. Meet OJ. That's right. Her dog is a plastic orange juice container. Oy vey! When will her life get normal? Never underestimate the power of beans. Beans, beans, the musical fruit, the more you eat. Serious, beans are super. Case in point. Tucker, alias Bean Boy, AKA Sidekick. Family is a mess. Hardworking mom, super goober brother. And then there's the scary school nemesis. Yeah, she's a girl. Tucker's got a few problems but he can solve them by drawing on the power of beans. Right. Beans, beans, good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you... Rita, focus. Ah, uh, Kafka, I love beans. And I love the next award coming up. Adventure! Dun, da, 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 da. And the nominees for best adventure, including a puzzler, are... Ever gone to Washington, D.C.? Visited those museums? At first, it's fun, and then you start getting bored. Look, there's the original Declaration of Independence. There's an original Vermeer. There's the original ruby red slippers. Then you finally go home, or so three kids thought, until they found themselves snowed in at the airport with a bunch of thieves who had just stolen a real national treasure, the original flag. Oh, say can you see we're in a bunch of big trouble. Who doesn't like a family vacation? Cool, fun, exciting, and sailing in the South Pacific? Sounds great, right? Well, for four kids who have nothing much in common, except that their parents fell in love, forcing them to become a new family, this sailing vacation was a chance to learn about each other in extremely close quarters. Instead, they discovered that a massive storm has left them shipwrecked with no adults, no instruction, no one on this forsaken island. Now they have to learn to work together if they want to survive. That is, if they can survive each other. Games are fun! Why Kyle would rather play a video game than work on some essay contest? Until he found out, first prize meant one, meeting the most weirdly brilliant game maker around, two, winning $500 worth of games, three, oh yeah, being the first to see the new library. Apparently, eccentric Mr. Lemoncello donated a bazillion dollars to create a wondrous, amazingly incredible library. 
Now Kyle is desperately trying to win this contest. What he doesn't know is once the 12 winners get locked into the library, they will have to puzzle their way out. Wow, I bet the library lady loved that one the best. Okay, Frida, it's time. Your favorite genre. Oh, goody! Animal stories! And the nominees for best animal stories are... Dogs get overly excited, especially when they see squirrel. That's why Twitch is running for his life. Escaping to the nearby school seemed like a good idea, but then that dog followed him. And well, the craziness began. If you don't believe me, just ask all the classroom pets. Hey, who called 911? Helmets. Cool, right? Well, not if you have to wear them all the time. This is Benji's uncool life. He practically lives at the hospital. Accident prone, allergies, you name it. And now the doctors tell him seizures. This is his new choice. You can wear the ugliest padded helmet in the universe or get a therapy dog. Welcome Elvis, the Newfoundland, a 200 pound bossy dog that talks. Well, only Benji can hear him. The rain kept coming. The wind never stopped. It was a storm like no other. Hurricane Katrina. Hooper didn't know about hurricanes. Ripped from his family clinging to trees and rooftops, the floodwaters carried him far away. He and his home lost. Hurricane Katrina changed lives and families forever, along with their pets. Over 250,000 pets were left stranded. This is the true story of one frightened little dog's struggle to survive. Flora had spirit. She was born for adventure. Except she was actually born in a pig pen, being a pig and all, and though her brothers were happy just eating their slop, she wanted more. And then she saw those dogs running. That's when Flora decided she would be a sled dog. Well, a sled pig. Somehow Flora's determined hoofs got her on board a ship to Antarctica, the very one the sled dogs were going. Flora's life will now have adventure, excitement, and more danger than she ever imagined. Let's give the animal books our tail wag of approval. Which book do you think will win, Kafka? Well, we'll have to wait till the end of the school year. Then the kids can read all 15 books and vote for their favorite. All righty then, you know what that means. Our show is done, it's time to run!